Hey guys, it's Jerry Travis back again with Jerry.Education and today we're going to do the third video in the Intro to Excel series about basic formatting. Now there's so many different ways to format things in Excel I'm clearly not going to be able to cover all of them in this one video but I want to quickly uh, just show you some things that you'll do all the time that are super handy and can take your spreadsheets from looking uh, not so good to really professional like you spent a lot of time putting it together okay so the first thing we want to do here is do what's called a merge and center now I'm gonna click in the middle of this cell starting at a1 in the middle of it at so sweet and I'm gonna drag over to lowest okay so we've got this one um, selection made here in row one and if you look right up here in the alignment section there is a merge and center button now if you hit the drop down you can just merge your cross without centering uh, merge into one big cell unmerge and so on but we're gonna merge and center and it does exactly what it says it's gonna do it turns this into one big cell and it centers the contents of the first cell in that one big cell now that's really important okay the contents have to be in the first cell so if you try to merge and center with a cell with a bunch of stuff in it uh, where there's something in each cell you're gonna have uh, trouble it won't work okay so that's a merge and center and just so you know you can unmerge by hitting the drop down and going to unmerge cells okay so we'll just merge and center okay now I want to make this title a little bigger and you can do that one way by going up here to the font box hit the drop down and you could pick whatever font size you want but if I'm just kind of eyeballing it and I know I just want to make it bigger you can use this little increase font size and decrease font size to go back down or finally if you wanted some really weird font size like 17.5 you can type it in on the keyboard and press enter okay so whatever you want to do there's no wrong way to do it it just depends on how you want to do it and I'm gonna go right here and bold okay and all of this is in the font group on the home ribbon and these are called ribbons by the way and occasionally I'll refer to them as tabs I mean the same thing but officially these are ribbons um, so there we go we have successfully uh, merged and centered this title now if you watched the first video in this series you'll note that I was really upset by the way that this date got formatted okay and you can see that Excel changed it back or not back but changed it to uh, 8 1 2016 and what I initially had topped in was August 16 2016 well Excel is smart and formatted this as a date style okay now like I was telling you guys a long time ago or in the uh, first video not like that was forever ago but there's a bunch of ways to change the formats of stuff and I'm gonna hit this little flyout here in the number group on the home ribbon and this flyout is called the dialog launcher so from now on I'm gonna call it a dialog launcher Okay, and this is the most old school way I know of to change these things. But I'm going to go ahead and do it this way because you can see every possible option. And it just makes it really convenient. So I'm going to hit this dialog launcher. It's going to pop up a box that says format cells like so. Right now it's in a custom format, which I may cover in a video at some point. But there are so many custom codes you can type in but we're just gonna go up to date okay go up to date in the category and you'll notice there's several categories and we're gonna see number and currency and, and all this jazz in a minute but we're gonna go to date for now and if I just click down through here there should be one that looks like I wanted it to look and guess what there's not okay so we're gonna be visiting that custom um, setting a little bit quicker than I 
had anticipated. Okay, so I'm going to hit this. Okay, because this is the closest to what I want, right? And when you do that and jump down to custom, you'll see that it'll put in some codes for us already, and we just got to kind of um, figure out what we want to keep and what we don't. Okay, so I want to get rid of this day altogether, and this is something that I hadn't anticipated uh, while doing this video. But this will just give you the power of the custom settings. Okay. So you remove that and we've got August. So clearly four M's in a row is the month spelled out. Then we've got the um, DD is for the date with a leading zero if it has one. And we'll just back it on up. And apparently what we needed was four M's and four Y's. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I didn't know that. Okay. Um... But what I did do was go up here to date, pick the one I thought would work, and then add that in. Um, or modify it from here. Because it gives you some starter code. And you can go look up all of these to know what they do. Okay, but now when I click OK, it's exactly what I wanted. And it's still formatted as a date. And the cool thing is, it wouldn't matter what day I put in... August 2016 it's still gonna say August 2016 but generally if you're just gonna go with month and year you do want to stick with the first um, day of that month okay so now I'm gonna merge and center this across just because it's what all the cool kids do okay and we'll make this a little bit bigger I'll go ahead and bold it too why not okay so you've learned some pretty valuable skills. Okay, the merge and center thing. And notice I had to do those one row at a time. You cannot merge and center uh, multiple rows at a time. So there's the merge and center. Just by highlighting what you want to turn into one big cell. And also we applied a custom format to this date. And that was entirely accidental. I thought there was a pre-made one that would allow me to have month and year but remember I just went to my little number format clicked on the dialog launcher and that's how we were able to do that okay so now let's focus on um, down here what we got going on and I think I made a little adjustment before I started recording so let me fix that back and you should have something about like this where Maple Avenue is cut off and that's because in Excel if there's nothing in the adjacent cell and you overflow a cell it will just show up but as soon as you put something in the adjacent cell Excel truncates or cuts off it's called truncate uh, what is in the cell that's overflowing the good news for us is we can uh, make this fit. Okay, so there are a bunch of ways to do this, but I'm going to tell you about one way now, and that is go between your little uh, A and B, and this is a double-headed arrow at the top here. I'm just going to click and drag out. Okay, so that's one way. Another way is if you double-click, it will make it fit perfectly. Now, if we would have used the double click method before I merged and centered the So Sweet Lemonade sales, it would have widened this column out as wide as the So Sweet Lemonade sales was whenever it just occupied A1 before we merged and centered. So I use the double click method most of the time, but be aware if you have headings or something on your sheet that occupy that same column, you may not get the uh, desired effect okay so it worked this time because we had already merged and centered but just keep in mind that's why that'll happen that way sometimes if you double click and it jumps like that but this is perfect perfectly fits okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do what's called formatting this as a table okay now some of you may say, wait a minute, you can add a total row when you do that, and you've already got one. Well, we're just going to do it this way 
for now and leave it the way that we set it up in the original video. So I'm going to highlight my table data here. And right now it's not a table. It's just considered a range. And I'm going to go right up here to Format as Table. Format as Table. And not only is this going to apply a format, it's going to give us all kinds of options to sort our data and um, do some calculations on it, which we're probably not going to do in this video. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit this, and we are greeted with several formats. Okay, the light formats are just that, medium. You know, the colors are a little richer. And then you go down to the dark colors, and it's just, you know, really dark stuff. So since this is a lemonade stand business, I'm going to go with this one. Notice that on this particular theme, um, this formatting theme, it's got a header row up here because our labels for our columns in this data are going to be in this dark spot. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it. And you'll see that it says my table has headers, and that's really important. The headers are simply the label in the first row of the table. Okay, and sometimes you may have data that doesn't have a header up here, but this is like the location, column, week one column, and so on. So I'm going to leave that checked, and we're going to click OK. Okay. So now you'll see that it not only did it format it, and by the way, once you do that, you can just mouse over to see what these other formats would look like, okay, um, without even having to click, but I like this one, that's why I picked it. Um, but you'll notice we ended up with these drop downs, okay, and we're not going to do anything with these drop downs. These are called filter buttons. So you can see real quick that you can do sorting, you can. Uh, uncheck boxes right here to hide the rows that this stuff would be in that type of thing you can do it for each um, each one of the headers here those are called filter buttons now this is something we haven't seen in Excel yet but when you format something as a table and you're clicked inside of a table there's a special ribbon that only shows up whenever you're clicked on a table and it's under in this case table tools and the design tab sometimes you'll have a special ribbon that has several different tabs that are special and they'll be grouped by in this case this yellow table tools okay so that only shows up when I'm on the table as soon as I click off of the table it's not even a possibility anymore so that's that's pretty smart on Microsoft's part so I'm gonna click in this table and I'm gonna uncheck the filter button because we're not gonna be using it okay so as far as we're concerned, everything is is as it was, okay? Um, and don't worry about this total row here. We've already got our own total row in, but there is a way to have Excel automatically do a total row without uh, having to manually calculate it like we did in the first video, okay? But don't worry about that. And um, so I am going to, first things first, if you remember, I was very upset that the header text was aligned to the left on my weekly totals and my total highest, average, and lowest. Okay, And that's because numbers, by default, align to the right. The reason that happens is your decimal places will not... Um, your decimal places will not line up unless you align numbers to the right. And text in a cell by default aligns to the left. And that's why these labels for the locations and location is already lined up. So what I'm going to do is highlight week one through lowest. And remember, these are ranges. And I could say B3 to I3. Okay. Uh, but these are ranges. And I am going to go back to home because you don't have to stay in this table tools design just because you're clicking the table. And right here, there's an alignment, a uh, set of alignment buttons in the alignment group. And I'm going to align these labels to the right so that they match the uh, numbers and everything's aligned to the right. So that's made me feel a lot better. You have no idea how much better that makes me feel. Just so we can set off these totals here, 
and the average highest and lowest I'm gonna highlight this stuff so from F4 to I7 okay that's my range uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to this little bucket this little paint bucket in the font group and that's gonna change the background color of the cell and you wouldn't necessarily have to do this but I thought it kind of uh, set off that that stuff was different than the weekly totals because we use formulas to calculate it so you can go here and pick one of these colors and I'm gonna stay in the gold accents because um, the theme I've got is is in the yellows I'm going a little overboard with this lemonade thing but hey um, you know I, I think it looks uh, different and really makes it look lemonadey if that's a word so now we've highlighted those so that everybody knows hey wait a minute yeah this is a special little section and just for giggles I'm gonna go right here and we'll apply the same and the cool thing is once you pick a color the last color you use stays on the bucket so now I can click like that uh, just on the bucket itself without having to pick the color okay and this isn't the prettiest spreadsheet I've ever made but as long as you know how to change these things I'm happy okay and now I'm gonna take this total row and we're gonna bold the thing okay and we'll go ahead and bold the first column as well all right so we did a lot of work on this particular um, on this particular sheet and I just noticed something the total of the average really doesn't matter it's not a thing so I'm just gonna press delete on the keyboard and that will clear out these three cells we didn't need these okay and that's um, nothing really wrong with that that's just kinda how it is and because there's nothing in these cells I'll go ahead and hit the drop down go to no fill okay and that's how you can uh, empty out a background color once you apply it so it's not the greatest thing ever but I will run we, we will run with it okay so we've covered a lot of stuff with formatting this as a table now real quick like we're gonna change up these charts just a little bit and there's other things we could do but I'm trying to make these somewhat short so that uh, you can watch them during class or uh, you don't have to sit there all day to see how to do this stuff but we're gonna go ahead and change the theme on this chart so I'm gonna click on the line chart first again we've got a special ribbon here for chart tools this one has design and format uh, looks like I need to go to design and there's nothing wrong with this chart style I like it but I'm gonna go to change colors and we're gonna pick this one right here because we're sticking with the lemonade thing even though it may not be the prettiest uh, that's how we're gonna roll okay so there we go we've turned this into kind of a uh, lemonade color scheme now honestly these monochromatic schemes uh, in a lot of ways are not the best okay but we're gonna make it work um, just so everything matches uh, so now I'm gonna click on the the bar chart and it's actually gonna be a little easier to read in the monochromatic scheme I wish I would have went with limeade because uh, the green colors are so much prettier than the yellow colors. But hey, you live, you learn, I guess, right? Okay, so now we formatted the charge here to uh, be in this same yellow color scheme. So we've basically covered a lot of formatting uh, aspects. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. And I will have other videos coming your way soon we're going to get into formulas a little more because right now the formulas that we're showing are pretty basic that'll be the next video in the series is uh, some more stuff with formulas a little bit more advanced a little bit more discussion uh, please subscribe and that way whenever I post another video it will give you a notification in your email everybody have a great day and I'll see you on the next one